Morning, Josiah. I just saw your um, video on uh, on more novel ways to carry uh, data around, and I am uh, a geek, an old geek of the sneaker net era. Um, yes, uh, in, just in case anybody missed the uh, the what sneaker net is, it's basically you put whatever it is on some mobile so storage. Back in the day, it was a floppy disk. Then you put your sneakers on. And then you go walk to your friend's house and plug the plug the uh, media into the computer, and that was sneaker net. But um, yes, uh, it's going to be important, I think, to uh, um, to uh, <laughs> learn other ways of moving data around. Now, if the internet is censored and not uh, totally shut down. There might be some options for using um, some a, a, a network that's been in the works for a while now, and it's called Freenet. Um, you could just Google Freenet, and you'll be able to find it. And what Freenet is is a a group of computers all connected together on um, on in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, and basically they share, uh, hosted on e all the individual drives, um, they share sort of a second internet. <laughs> and I was on there about, oh, six months ago, and I was amazed. I had such a feeling of deja vu when I was surfing around because it felt like the internet felt back when it was brand new, before, before uh, the corporations took it over. Um, this was like real people making web pages on whatever they cared about, you know. And um, basically, the network is hosted on a bunch of encrypted sections of, of the hard drive, depending on how much of your hard drive you want to turn over to this sort of thing. And, um, and it's more popular in, uh, in countries where there is some censorship, um, so it's not really big in the U.S., but... The idea is that um, that if you are surfing a web page, right, and the web page exists somewhere out there, it you are hooked up to like five or six, all the way up to twenty different computers, right? And basically, you send the request, and it bounces to a computer, which bounces to another, another, and it's blind. Nobody knows how far it goes. It could be like six jumps away, uh, crisscrossing the U.S. four times before it reaches the web page then the data is transferred back in that jumpity jump method and it's uh, it's a very slow process um, so it's not, it doesn't really lend itself to things like YouTube uh, all of this high high bandwidth video but it's great for like um, there's like some news groups and there's like uh, there's even some some degree of email functionality although uh, Freenet is just sort of, it's, it's, it's still in the works, but if there was suddenly a lot of censorship, um, it could conceivably have its place. Now, um, there are other networks, um, like, um, like I've recently been looking into what they call mesh networks, M-E-C-H, I believe it's, no, it's M-E-S-H, well, anyway, it's, it's a, a network of uh, computers generally over a, like a Wi-Fi thing, and um, you can hook it up to whoever is closest, and uh, then basically you can exchange messages and whatnot. And whoever is mobile, if somebody's in a car driving around with a laptop, um, it will like intermittently log on to or connect to and cross crisscross messages and what mail across um, uh, between computers and it's kind of like the old Pony Express days so it's not as uh, not as instant as um, as the internet is but it would be better than nothing like there's some places in China I think that that actually have a no access to anything and they have something similar to a mesh network and there's like villages whole villages that that get their email delivered by bicycle there's this like there's these people on bicycles who have laptops strapped to the back and they have this like 30 mile route that they go every day and uh 
and as they do that, like once or twice a day, the email messages from the village uh, load onto that little laptop, and then they are immediately transferred to the internet by when the uh, when the laptop becomes within range of like an internet node <laughs> or an internet uh, hotspot, like Wi-Fi, you know. So there are other ways of doing that. Um, also, uh, I like the idea of the uh, encrypted uh, data things uh, or like the flash drives. I use something similar to that myself. For example, uh, basically this is my little machine area here. And um, I don't keep any documents on this machine, right? I keep like, if a crackhead or somebody walked into this place and um, like, <laughs> try like was going to swipe the machine. By the way, the, as soon as like uh, um, an invader comes into your home, if if they're like just uh, a burglar, the first thing they do is they come to your uh, computer desk and they turn the thing upside down, looking for uh, looking for um, uh, uh, checkbooks and credit card statements and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, they just turn the place upside down looking looking for stuff, right? Uh, but the thing is, on my machine, they'll never find it because, um, first of all, I keep all of my paperwork, like old credit card statements in here. Um, let's see them carry that thing out after they rip it off the wall. <laughs> Good luck. That's one buff crackhead. <laughs> but... Um, Generally, I keep my date and my sensitive data, like Excel spreadsheets full of like uh, passwords and stuff. I keep things like that on. Om this is the only place where I and all my old journals and stuff like that. I keep it all on this little flash drive. This is just a an eight gigabyte flash drive. It's a uh, Lexar, and it has this little thing where uh, it tells how how full the disk is. This one's about half full, and it has its own. Um, encryption software that comes with the card um, maybe that might boost the price so that uh, that software you were talking about uh, that will be you know extremely useful I might want to get something like that myself I've got this old uh, 16 gigabyte uh, flash card right here that I could use um, if I could encrypt it well anyway um, I just plug it into my USB hub there and the software pops up and I key in the password and and I am um, there you go the secure to software now of course the black ops people could break into it but the thing is people like that would have no reason to break into any of this stuff because I am a boring guy <laughs> and the only people who would want to break into it would be people who would want to steal passwords and credit card bills and stuff and they would they wouldn't have the means to break into it if they actually managed to run off with this card they could re reformat it and use it as a flash drive but they wouldn't be able to get any information off of it so they could steal my whole machine I mean I've customized it and done all kinds of funky things and really cool stuff too like uh like I've uh, made this uh I've installed hard drive trays so I can just yank these hard drives and and throw a different one in for different types of data that I want to use. But uh, this is like, whoops. <laughs> anyway, this is highly cool. But uh, back to what I was saying, yes, I keep all of my encrypted data in this flash drive. So um, if you were going to uh, like need to transfer a lot of data this would be a great way to do it um, I also have a one of these little thumb drives in my cell phone here the cool thing about this cell phone is I'm a mechanic I keep I keep um, uh, what you call it torques troubleshooting trees uh, wiring diagrams friggin everything all on this teeny little uh, um, 8 gigabyte uh, thumbnail drive. <laughs> a friend of mine always says, I love living in the future when he he has these cool geek toys like this. <laughs> I gotta say I agree. Later.